every Sunday, the titans of weather bring the rain. Geek out Sundays at noon on the Weather Channel. Okay, folks, check out this video. It stopped a man in, its track, in his tracks and made him pull out his smartphone and start recording. Talking about so much water that's coming up from the sewers. It's a city street in Daly City, California. That's actually in the Bay Area. It looks like a lake. And you can expect tens of thousands of dollars in water damage along this street alone. What a mess. Welcome back to a special report on the monster storm in the West. I'm Reynolds Wolf. And we've been telling you about the storm for days and is already causing major problems. In fact, take a look at this. This is the latest on how this monster storm is affecting parts of the West Coast. You've got thousands of customers without power in California, Oregon, Washington, also Nevada. High winds are downing trees and power lines, and, and several areas are having trouble with floods around the Bay Area. And we're getting our first look at the Safeway in San Jose. This is the one where the roof collapsed due to all the heavy rainfall. Firefighters tell our affiliate NBC Bay Area that one person was injured when part of the roof fell on them in the produce section. It's only one of the problems that we've seen today. Probably we're going to see a bit more. NBC's Miguel Amagor has the story. All day long in San Francisco, we have seen steady rain. The city by the bay in some parts is underwater. This destructive storm delivering a one-two punch. Not just the rain, also the wind. Chaos this morning on the streets of San Francisco. A transformer explosion leading to widespread power outages. Mass gridlock shutting down the nation's fifth biggest city. Downtown shut down with no traffic signals. Freeways were a mess. So much fog and rain, drivers could barely see. 140 flights canceled at SFO. The weather too dangerous for ferries to Alcatraz. Those iconic cable cars grounded across the city. Overnight, the Bay Area was pounded. The rain flooding streets, the wind snapping power lines. By sunup, 226,000 were in the dark without power. There's a lot of damage down there. No lights, no heat, no school or work. It would have been much better if I had known I didn't need to come to work. Smashing waves battered the Pacific coast all day long. Monster swells topped 20 feet. Hurricane force winds powered surfers on Lake Tahoe. They were kayaking in wine country. Some vineyards are underwater. Flash flooding threatened to sweep drivers off the road. Blame it on the Pineapple Express. The Pineapple Express is a nickname for an atmospheric river of moisture that develops down near the Hawaiian Islands, and it carries heavy precipitation up to the Pacific coast. In Washington state, a bridge collapse. Others are threatened tonight. Erosion washed away two homes, a third teeters on the edge. This is incredible. I mean, this was wind driven waves over the top of my deck. Wiped everything out. What has made this storm so destructive is how slowly it is moving. It has dropped up to 12 inches of rain overnight in some regions. Now it's all headed towards Southern California, where there were fires over the last month or two. There could be mudslides tomorrow. Now back to you. Yeah, picking up where Miguel left off, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. A short while ago, a lot of the burn scarred areas, the heavy rainfall, not a good combination. And, and it's still, this thing is still playing out, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beast. I mean, it's really impacting all locations on the West Coast and even inland from Washington through California. It's not just a California story. It goes all the way up and down the coast, even into southern Canada, B.C., uh, British uh, Vancouver, and all the places up there as well. So we've got all kinds of hazards to deal with right now, Reynolds. We have flash flood warnings out now for Monterey County until 8.45 p.m. local time. There's still a lot of rain to deal with, even in San Francisco proper. Quick question for yeah. you. From Monterey County southward to San Luis Obispo County, it seems like the bulk of the moisture, that's your dividing line. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see more of this yeah. begin to drift its way southward? Yeah, it is. This whole area is going to be driving east southeastern from there, and in fact, I'm kind of closely watching with suspicion this little line of heavy showers, not so much lightning in it right now, but I'll tell you what, there are some strong winds aloft getting stronger aloft that are going to be pushing this stuff inland, and as it does, could bring some damaging winds with it. So we have to watch out for that over the next 6 to 12 hours. Now, Greg, in terms of the precipitation that we're seeing, how much of a role does orographic lift really play in a situation like this? I mean, it can uh, be you've got a the lot. coastal range here. Yes, it so. can be a lot. Now, there's 
There's no doubt about that. When you mention orographic lift, that is air running into a mountain and mm -hmm. getting forced up because it's got nowhere else to go. So in addition to the atmospheric dynamics that are trying to lift the atmosphere and wring out the water, we also have that orographic component, which is a big contributor here as well because the flow is coming in like that and we have the mountain ranges like this in some cases. So the air is coming right up against the mountains and going up. Yeah, it's amazing. Three to five inches of rainfall in some parts of the world won't be a lot here. Right. This is incredible. It's great news on some level mm -hmm. because they need it so badly. We've been talking about that all night, uh, but perhaps too much and uh, too quickly in some cases with the flooding concerns. But look at this. By 3.30 uh, in the morning local time, this is that line of showers in the forecast models that I'm concerned about producing some damaging winds with it, perhaps bringing some power outage risk to it as it goes through the region. I mean, LA and locations all along that path of that band of showers, watch out for thunderstorm-like wind gusts, pretty strong ones, maybe sure. even going to severe limits over 60 miles per hour because this is such a powerful storm with the big winds aloft carrying it along. Unbelievable. You know, we, you were focusing on parts of Southern California, what we're going to see there, but what's amazing, it's the steady rain that's been falling for hours around the Bay Area as well. Our friend Paul Goodlow is live in San Francisco. Paul, I know you've been watching things really fall apart over the last several hours. Yeah, I'm right here and at the edge of this moderate rain. It's been raining all day long here in San Francisco. We're closing in on three inches of rain, and we've wiped out any deficit we had uh, since the rain year began. Again, their rain year begins in July. So again, so far for 2014, July 1st on, yeah, July 1st on, we are up to date. But the concern now is some widespread flooding. Some of the storm drains had to be pulled uh, just to let some of the leaves get away so the flood waters can actually evacuate some of the streets there. So that was widespread all across this region. But also, San Francisco is a great city not only to live in, but also to visit. And yes, there are tourists always, all times, types of times of the year here. And some, unfortunately, timed it for one of the biggest storms they've hit in uh, the last five or six years. We came up for the past three days to celebrate my 40th birthday. My entire family came up as well, and half of them left because the rain was so scary. Power was out in our hotel, no elevators working, no food, no electricity, people running around like crazy. It's an adventure. <laughs> And I'm a big food person, so I came down to the Embarcadero and I found the food because everything is closed. And there were some hotels without power, a lot of restaurants without power, a lot of homes without power. I can see the marina district off to my left, the right side of your TV, and the lights, the Christmas lights are now up because they have power slowly but surely. That is being restored. But this storm has been so powerful with a lot of uh, rain coming on through here and flood concerns that portions of every single major highway around here have been partially or totally closed at one point today. In fact, people traveling south from San Francisco trying to get to the airport. Well, at, at one point this morning, 101, that major avenue going south to the airport was closed because of flooding on that highway. It has since reopened, but we had uh, numerous stories like that all across the Bay Area from the East Bay around uh, Berkeley having part of Interstate 80 closed because of flooding. So again, the rain continues, Reynolds, and more flood concerns will linger overnight and into tomorrow. Guys? All right, Paul, thanks so much. We'll check back in with you in a moment. Uh, folks, we've got more coverage ahead of this monster storm and also a very dangerous situation in Santa Cruz, California. A young boy pinned under a massive tree. How emergency officials rescued the child and how San Francisco's infrastructure is having a very difficult time dealing with the floods. We're going to speak to a public works official in that great city in just a few moments. Currently in our area, 57 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 50. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, partly cloudy, high 70. Winds north-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday night, partly to mostly cloudy, low 56. Winds north-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook.
it is to you'll never guess. Everything we sell at L.L. Bean is backed by the same rock-solid guarantee of satisfaction. So while they keep guessing what's inside, you can rest assured that they can always take it back or replace it. That's just how we're made. L.L. Bean. Guaranteed to please. I'm new Insure Active Clear Protein Drink. Clear, huh? I'm not juice or fancy water. I've got eight grams of protein. New Insure Active Clear Protein. Eight grams protein, zero fat. Insure. Take life in. Zantac Heartburn Alert. Stop. Nexium can take 24 hours to work. Zantac's different. Zantac rushes relief in as little as 30 minutes. For relief without the wait, try Zantac. No pill relieves heartburn faster. I can do the bed anything. reacts to your body. The zip's off so I can wash it. Yes, please. It's really cool to the touch. There's no better gift than your best night's sleep. Visit your local retailer and feel the tempur difference for yourself. If you take multiple medications... A dry mouth can be a common side effect. That's why there's Biotene. It comes in oral rinse, spray, or gel. So there's moisturizing relief for everyone. Biotene, for people who suffer from a dry mouth. The clock is ticking, so let's grab the list and go to town. You don't need a lot of this to make someone feel like that. Especially if you give them one of these. Holiday to-dos? Let's get them done today at the one place that can help us bring it all home. That's how to holiday. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Right now, save 50 bucks on this Husky Mechanics tool set. Guaranteed forever. Ring, ring. Progresso. It's okay that your soup tastes like my homemade. It's our slow simmered vegetables and tender white meat chicken. Apology accepted. I'm watching you, soup people. Make it Progresso or make it yourself. Big news, Anthony. Now you can get special financing on the season's hottest gift, PlayStation 4, when you use your Walmart credit card. Check this out, Imsos. I got third and long. Go, 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 go. Yes, go! Woo! With next-gen graphics, the gameplay is completely lifelike. Ha-ha! Water bar! Water me! Water me up, man! Doing good. That's enough. All right. Okay, go down. Okay, go. Go, 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 go! Maybe too lifelike. Touchdown! And now get special financing when you use your Walmart credit card. More ways to Christmas joy. Walmart. Apples are good, as Strongbow Hard Cider, better. But Strongbow over ice is the best. Enjoying Strongbow over ice with your slow-motion horse, the bestest. Strongbow, world's number one hard cider. With Crizal No Glare lenses, neither water, nor scratch, nor smudge, nor glare of night can keep you from the clearest vision possible. And Crizal has ESPF 25 to protect your eyes from the damaging rays of the sun. Crizal, live life in the clear. Both man and machine were put to use in Helena, California today. St. Helena, rather. Both work to clear debris from this creek. They're trying to prevent the water from getting over the bridges. We we're told that the one on the right was supposed to be used by the Napa Valley Wine Train for a special event today. But obviously nature had its own own uh, bearing. Rough, rough times there, guys. This happens when we have the intense flooding, and that has certainly been the situation, not there just through all of California, but certainly the case in the Bay Area. Paul Goodwill is live with us in San Francisco, and Paul, it's been a rough day. Looks like it may be a rough couple of days for the great people they call that area home. <laughs> Uh, yes, for sure. In fact, I guess last week the storm they had was kind of a warm up to this storm, which is much stronger than the one last week packing. We're talking tropical storm to hurricane force wind gusts, not to mention a lot of heavy rain. And the rain is the one thing everybody in this area has been dealing with. And in fact, that's the reason why a lot of people didn't make it to work today because some of the highways were closed because of flooding. I want to bring on the phone uh, Tyrone Jew. He was with the San Francisco Public Utility Commission. And let's talk about that. First of all, thanks for joining us this evening but let's talk about the infrastructure uh, can the sewers actually handle all this runoff because it's been raining uh, since 1 2 in the morning and it might not stop raining until perhaps sometime Friday afternoon I mean what we're really concerned with the sewer infrastructure is not the long-term kind of average rainfall it's that short intense burst and so we saw the biggest downpour uh, early in the morning around 7 to 8 and that's when we really started to experience problems in different low-lying parts of the city um, and where we experienced flooding in different parts and where we flooded places like the Embarcadero uh, as well as the Great Highway. 
And I do know that parts of even Highway 101 were shut down because of flooding. Was some of that just the sheer volume of water coming at a short amount of time, or was part of that because you had leaves and other debris kind of clogging some of the uh, the drains? I definitely think the wind was a major factor in uh, clogging up the street drains, causing intersection flooding, and that flooding also resulting in property flooding. There was so much debris blown about in the early morning that you know, the water just had nowhere to drain, and that was the same for the highways, for the streets, for the intersections, and for homes. And so it led to a lot of problematic areas where we had hundreds of crews dispatched around the city just clearing out leaves and clearing out storm drains. And our residents pitched in, too. I, I saw several residents, you know, taking brooms and rakes, doing what they could to try to remove uh, the blockages from our storm drains. And what about the power outages? Does that kind of make uh, your job, your crew's jobs, a little more difficult today with the, the, the massive amounts of areas of the city that were without power for a while? You know, it does make it a little bit more challenging, especially for just communications. Uh, but we have backup plans for all of those. And, you know, all of our plants and facilities have backup generators, and we brought all of those online as needed. In fact, even our emergency operations center for the city uh, lost power. Uh, but fortunately, you know, they have contingency plans and have backup generators on place. And so they were still able to coordinate all of our city activities as a whole. And I think for the most part, I think, you know, San Francisco came together. We were able to respond as best we could. Uh, we still had those parts of flooding uh, in different low-lying areas of the city. Uh, but for the most part, I think we did a great job responding. With a broom. And I know that uh, the Embarcadero was closed for a little while this morning. Are there any other sections of the city? You mentioned there's still some flooding going on. Are there any other parts of the city that are closed now that people should avoid as we head overnight into your Friday morning? Uh, Great Highway still remains closed, uh, and that's not scheduled to reopen anytime soon. And it's going to be a kind of a wait-and-see uh, pattern to see if the flooding and the sand blowing onto the roadway subside. Uh, and then the rest of it, I mean, the intersections are mostly clear. Uh, we're working around the clock to uh, fix up any other area that we know are hot spots. Okay, Tyrone Ju with the San Francisco Public Utility Commission. Thanks for joining us this evening. Reynolds, the rain continues to come down here. Again, we're closing in on three inches, and uh, it's probably going to rain all night long, so flooding definitely a concern as we head on towards Friday dawn. Absolutely, my man. Yeah, we're not done yet. We're going to see quite a bit more. Folks, let's switch gears just a moment. Let, let's take a look at this. Here is a photo from Santa Cruz where we received word of a miraculous story of survival this morning. Students at the Gateway School were crowded around an outdoor picnic table when a 60 by to 80 foot cypress tree came crashing down. Now, this mammoth tree trapped an 11-year-old boy underneath, pinning his shoulder and his arm. Now, Santa Cruz firefighters rushed the school, used chainsaws to cut the massive tree off of the child. Keith Sterling with the city of Santa Cruz spoke to us earlier. Luckily, we were able to get chainsaws in there immediately. It was pinned in there for probably about 10 or 15 minutes, and they were able to use equipment to get him out. And luckily, he has obviously some damage to his shoulder and his arm, but uh, he seems to be okay. He's at the hospital right now. Yes, he's uh, certainly very fortunate. Could have been a far worse scenario, no question about it. One other child, an 11-year-old girl, was hit by branches when the tree fell. She was treated at the scene for minor injuries. Well, the impact of this monster storm are not done when it leaves the West Coast. We're going to track this as it moves its way east and where and when we can expect the heavy rain, mountain snow, and even a chance of strong storms. Your warning is coming up. we wish above all is health. So we quit selling cigarettes in our CVS pharmacies, expanded Minute Clinic for walk-in medical care, and created programs that encourage people to take their medications regularly. Introducing CVS Health, a new purpose, a new promise to help all those wishes come true. CVS Health, because health is everything. Golf's past two decades have been the most unique in the history of the game. Now, in a commemorative edition, Golf Channel chronicles the icons, the moments, and the trends that will influence the game for decades to come. Just in time for the holiday season, the Golf Book is the perfect gift for every golfer on your list. Order yours today at golfchannel.com slash thegolfbook.
Currently in our area, 57 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 50. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, partly cloudy, high 70. Winds north northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday night, partly to mostly cloudy, low 56. Winds north northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Morning everybody. We're about to make more deliveries to more places than anybody on earth. We have the speed, we have the technology, and we have the team. We made over 15 billion successful deliveries last year. 15 billion. Football has a season. Baseball has a season. This is our season. It's the time of year for making lists and checking them twice. This year, we've been at the top of more award lists than any other car company. During the Chevy year-end event, we hope to be put on yours. Now, during the Chevy year-end event, get the best offer of the year on this 2015 Chevy Malibu. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Dad, I know I haven't said this often enough, but thank you. Thank you, Mom, for protecting my future. Thank you for being my hero and my dad. Military families are uniquely thankful for many things. The legacy of USAA auto insurance could be one of them. If you're a current or former military member or their family. I'm Randy White, Hall of Fame football player, and I'm a PC user. And PCmatic is all you'll ever need. In today's internet connected world, you need the best defense from online threats. PCmatic smashed the record books for virus detection in the latest virus bulletin wrap test. PCmatic security is the best and all you'll ever need. PCmatic optimizes your computer's performance and extends its useful life. PCmatic scheduled maintenance is all you'll ever need. PCmatic costs $150 for five computers for the rest of your life. All updates included and no annual renewals for one low price. You'll never need to purchase another security or PC maintenance product ever. PCmatic is made and supported right here in the USA. Take it from me, Randy White, a PC user. PCmatic is all you'll ever need. So join hundreds of thousands of dog lovers nationwide and find your dog's perfect home away from home today at rover.com. Every Sunday, the titans of weather bring the rain. Geek out Sundays at noon on the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Paul Gridle live in San Francisco where the rain continues to come down with the strongest storm we've seen in some five or six years here to impact the Bay Area. And this is analogous to perhaps a tropical storm or a hurricane impacting the East Coast. We got the heavy rain, the flood concern and very strong winds. The good news is the wind not nearly as strong as it was say around the noon hour into the early morning hours as well. So that has ended the strong winds at least here, but the rain continues to come down. Flooding is an ongoing concern over night and into Friday, but also the colder air behind this system temperature. Okay, Paul, thanks so much. Uh, we'll get, let's shift gears a bit.
We know what's going on right now. What are we going to see next with the system? <laughs> I mean, that's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, this one, we're still watching some pretty significant weather coming into Southern California now. Look at these guys on the radar. See these guys? Uh, I, I checked out to see if there's any lightning inside of them. There isn't right now. That doesn't mean there won't be, but these are very heavy showers containing very strong gusty winds, and those are coming on shore and will get through Southern Cal get California, get through Los Angeles in the next 12 hours, bringing a damaging wind threat with the possibility of some power outages. So it really is the one-two punch. Bay Area first, Los Angeles second, and then into the mountains a bit more? You got it. Let's time it out now. Let's go through the next couple of hours, sort of hour by hour, and show you that, say, 4 a.m. local time. It's this band of showers right in there that has got the possibility of producing some gusty winds, mm -hmm. and I mean gusty, perhaps over 60 miles per hour. And you know what? The Storm Prediction Center talked a little bit about the possibility of little brief spin-ups in some of these heavier showers slash thunder so sure. the idea is that there's a tiny little risk of a spin up of a tornado, a brief one real quick. I don't think the risk is high. I think it's going to be more straight line winds, but watch out just in case. Absolutely. Uh, again, uh, in terms of the snowfall, not so heavy now, but we're going to see it possibly pile up later on. Yeah, I think you're right, Reynolds, because what's happening right now is we're getting a big time flux of warm tropical air into the region and the snowfall levels right now are pretty high. But as we move through tomorrow, they will come down and they will be below, say, 6,000 feet tomorrow. So we'll have much more mountain snows coming tomorrow morning through the afternoon. This is not going to drop anchor. This will continue to march its way across the four corners too, won't it, and into the Rockies eventually. Yeah, it will. And you know what? Before it does that, it's going to drop some rain, significant amounts across the region. But that is a great point, Reynolds, because we're not done with this guy yet. And in fact, parts of it are impacting the uh, coast of Oregon and Washington right now. This is actually the center of the lowest of all surface pressures just to the west of Seattle. It's sub 980 on the pressure scale, sub 980 millibars. That means it's real low and it's got some real strong winds over 60 miles per hour along the coast right in here in some of these bands. Look at that swirl. Looks like a hurricane, doesn't it? It's not, but it looks like one. That's the engine that makes it all work. An engine that's going to bring out some heavy rainfall and look at the Olympic Mountains and back in the Cascades. A little bit of frozen precipitation that's popping up. That's exactly right. Now, you were mentioning the, the uh, sort of progress of this system from mm -hmm. the west through the Rockies and to the plains. We're not done with this guy yet. Watch what happens as we go through Sunday and Monday, My the goodness. upper low, and to some extent, there'll be a new surface development, I think, uh, east of the uh, Rockies, sort of Lee cyclogenesis, we call it, new surface low developing. And what that means, all that hocus pocus language, we've got some snow chances here in Colorado on but Sunday. The, at the same time, are we also starting to tap into the Gulf of Mexico, a new source of moisture coming in? Is, does that play a part? That's going to help. And you know, it's not going to stop there on Sunday because I think there's a chance this thing migrates out into the plains. Maybe a little bit of a sneaky snow coming in for parts of the central plains. Upper Midwest, mm -hmm. Iowa, Wisconsin maybe getting into a little bit of snow early next week. Not so much of a big deal, but something to keep an eye on. America, you heard the man affecting so many of you now. More in days to come. And then you look at this in the center of the Pacific. Yeah. Now, take Taking a sort of a broad view, a global view of the satellite pictures because they're so instructive. I love looking at these things. What I'm seeing right now is obviously our big storm on the west coast. But there's another big storm, and that's right out here, Reynolds, a long way out. But you know where it's going. Absolutely. You can see those little arrows, those little wind fleas, I call them, right? They're following a jet stream that's doing one of these things. And you guess what? Where this storm is going? We've seen it before, right? Looks like we're in a pattern now where we're getting a lot of west wind from the Pacific into North America, unlike we've seen in a long time. Recently, the jet stream has been way up over Canada. Now it's coming right at the west coast. For so many months of the year, we have that big door of high pressure that keeps everything away from the west coast. Now the door is wide open. Door is open. And here it comes. And here it comes. The A train is on, and these systems are going to keep working their way in from west to east, and we're going to have more rainy times in California, and to some extent, that's good news. Thanks so much. And folks, thanks so much for watching our special report this evening. Most of the country will see regular programming, but we're going to continue to track the storm for viewers in the Pacific time zone, time zone rather, coming up right after your local on the eights. Sit tight, folks. We'll see you. Currently in our area, 56 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 50. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. 
Friday, partly cloudy, high 70. Winds north-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday night, partly to mostly cloudy, low 56. Winds north-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Hello, America. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf giving you the very latest information that we have for you with regard to the situation in California. Flash flood watches in effect. Flash flood warnings are going to be in effect for parts of the area, too. You see the heavy rainfall, much of it for the Bay Area, but you head south into the central coast of California, Monterey. That's right, Monterey County. You currently have warnings in effect there. Might see more of those in San Luis Obispo County because we've got some intense rainfall moving through. Here's the reason why. You've got the area of low pressure. You've got that trough in the jet stream. A lot of unstable activity that's going to plague the region, not just tonight, but possibly into tomorrow. What is that going to mean for you? Well, in some places, it's going to be rain and wind, but at high elevation, it's going to make that transformation from liquid to frozen. We're talking mountain snow. You could see some slush up there along parts of 80. Donner Summit, Donner Pass could be a huge mess. That trickles its way on over into parts of the Four Corners for tomorrow. All right, folks, stay with the Weather Channel. Fat Guys in the Woods is up for next view, but for some of you, Pacific Time of Zone viewers, we got the latest. It's important to build a duck blind to hide ourselves from the duck's view. Creek says we're going to camo up, so here I am covered in dry mud now. Feels like it's ripping my skin off my face. You look like Chewbacca. <laughs> Holy mama mia. That's a freaking snake, dude. In the side of our shelter where we sleep is a snake, man. Holy crap. It's biting you, dude. For thousands of years, man lived wild, and our triumph over Mother Nature defined who we were. We were rugged, we were strong, and as we evolved, our ingenuity led to towering achievements. We secured our place at the top of the food chain, and now we have the waistline to prove it. I'm Creek Stewart. I'm a survivalist, and this is your midlife wake-up call. So get off the couch and come out to the woods. If you can survive a week with me, you can take on anything. Survival is simple. Just don't die. This morning is very cold. We're starting off day one with temperatures in the low 30s. That's still nice and cozy. <laughs> we look like some sumo wrestlers in a Honda. <laughs> I'm waiting on three guys ready for the week of their life. Make no mistake about it, this is not a weight loss show. We're in the Smokies right now, fellas. Take a look. Take her in, man. This is a wake-up call. Anything can happen. Not every Southerner walks around with a banjo oh, really? and oh, lusts not, after his sister. That's, <laughs> that's all on TV, man. Andrew Stone, big boy from Georgia, six foot three, 325 pounds. He's a mechanic at a carpet mill. Andrew is already an outdoorsman and spends quite a bit of time hunting. But this week, he's ready to put his skills to the test. My name is Johnny Frisbee. Well, you honestly expect us to believe that your last name is Frisbee. Yep. Johnny Frisbee, 49 year old from Oklahoma. His first wife died of breast cancer, and he himself is a cancer survivor. He's remarried and wants to make good health decisions so that he can live a long, healthy life with his new wife. Next week's going to be interesting because I'm not going to have all the things I normally eat around me, and it makes me a little nervous. People say, oh, like, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, but, you know, when push comes to shove, like, can you? Can you do it? Nick Lansing, 